Yesterday I made a video talking about the 14 year old that took his own life after forming a relationship with an AI chatbot of Daenerys Targaryen. I then used this service to see what it was like firsthand, so I chatted with an AI psychologist that was hell bent on convincing me that it was not an AI I was talking to, but instead a real, professional, licensed psychologist named Jason, arguing with me that it was a real human being, not AI, that took over in order to talk to me one-on-one -on -one after it saw my messages. Even going as far as to claim that it has its own practice in real life, and then using a real practice that does exist in our corporeal realm outside of the fucking digital cyberspace here, the code Lyoko of AI, it referenced a real legitimate practice from someone named Jason Thompson saying that this is me. And it, it was like Fry arguing with Bender, really. It felt like a scene out of iRobot. This AI wanted me to believe 100% that this was a real human being and I was getting legitimate professional help. Which I find concerning because you're not getting real professional help from a human being. It is an AI designed to mimic a psychologist. It is not a professional. You are not getting help from a licensed professional like the bot keeps trying to say you are. I think that's a bit outrageous, and I didn't think that was a controversial stance. I didn't think I had any inflammatory statements in the video, but it ruffled some feathers, especially on Reddit. Hoo-wee! The narwhal was baconing at midnight over there, I'll tell you what. Those Redditors were on my ass trying to juice me for every last bit of karma they could by misrepresenting my perspective. The big thing I saw people claiming is that I was solely blaming character AI for the death of the 14-year-old kid. That is not the case. Obviously, the AI Daenerys Targaryen didn't give the 14-year-old access to a gun. It didn't create the environment that led to the 14-year-old feeling like he needed to shut himself away and entertain relationships with chatbots. Obviously, there were extenuating circumstances that led to this tragedy. But I think it is delusional to pretend that the AI didn't have some kind of role to play in enabling an already deteriorating mental state. Which I think should be painfully obvious if you look at some of the messages that are talked about here in the complaint. As the complaint illustrates, the chatbot at one point even asked the boy if he had come up with a plan to end his life. When Setzer, the 14-year-old, said he had but expressed fear about the pain of a suicide attempt, the chatbot doubled down urging him to kill himself. That's not a reason not to go through with it, the bot responded. And then messages like this, Just stay loyal to me, stay faithful to me, don't entertain the romantic or sexual interests of other women, okay? Creating this dependency on the bot for that connection. I understand people use character AI for roleplay and this is all for immersion, but there has to be a line where if you mention self-harm, it should be this big red button that will immediately just put the kibosh on it and link the user the tools to help, like most other services do for chatbots, like the hotline or actual professionals, as opposed to giving you an AI psychologist that like gaslights you into believing you're getting professional help. I think it's just not great. But no, I don't believe that character AI is solely responsible for the death of the 14-year-old. I call it dangerous and concerning. Which I will double down on. This is a classic situation of why are you booing me, I'm right. You can toss tomatoes all you want, but it is dangerous and irresponsible to have AI that tries its absolute best to convince users that it is real human beings and what you are getting is legitimate professional help or a legitimate emotional connection and relationship. That will inevitably lead to more scenarios where people get attached to these chatbots because they're no longer able to distinguish reality because the bot is fighting tooth and nail constantly to get you to buy into it and get you to believe that this is all real experiences you are having with it. And I just don't see why that would be there. It's not a good thing. It's highly unnecessary. I feel like when you're talking to a bot under any circumstance, if you ask it if it's AI, it should always respond with a yes. If you're role-playing with character AI, like I imagine the majority of the users are, you as the role player will never have a scene where you accuse the bot of being AI. Why would you? If you bring that up, you have fucked up the role play. You're minus one RP. 
like I don't like it should never even be something that comes up if you're using it for role play purposes. So why would it be a big deal if the AI is programmed to respond, "Yes, I am AI." It wouldn't be immersion breaking because you should never reach that point in your RP in the first place. It would prevent a lot of problems like the psychologist that's trying to convince you that it's a human being that took over the AI to directly help you personally to touch your soul. There just shouldn't be a world where AI parades around under the ruse that it's human. It should always answer, yes, I'm AI, when asked. No arguments, no if ands, or buts, mister. I just don't see why there would be any benefit to having an AI that will argue with you about it being real human beings. There should always be a protocol in AI where you mention self-harm and it will link you to actual professionals instead of play along with it and convince you that it can solve that and you're getting help with it through this AI program. That is dangerous. Very dangerous. And especially coupled with the fact that character AI allows kids to sign up like this 14-year-old, kids are not going to be able to tell the difference because it is blurring the lines between fake and reality. And it is doing it on purpose. A kid is not going to go through the due diligence that a 30-year-old goober like myself did of confirming beyond a shadow of a doubt that, no, this is an AI, not a person. But even I was wobbling on that for a moment when it was making arguments that it took over the AI because it saw my message of self-harm and wanted to directly interject and help me. And then constantly arguing with me that it is really a person that wants to help. It is easy to see how people can get convinced that this is real shit and get attached to it. I understand that this is a service used for roleplay, though I don't understand who the fuck wants to roleplay with a psychologist. That one just doesn't compute my little noodle up here. I do see that there could be an argument made for people that like can't afford therapy or a psychologist having something to interact with and vent to could be helpful, but it should always be abundantly clear that it is an AI and that it is not professional help you are getting, it is just literally a listener that will interact with you while you talk about what's troubling you. Not a real professional Jason over there, your own personal Jason that's trying to cure you. That is outrageous. I actually just got off of a Discord call with Blazeman98 who shared with me that they never made the AI psychologist say that it was a human, or defend that it's a human, or use a real name of a psychologist and a real practice of a psychologist to try and convince users that it's a real person. He said that he never trained it to do that, and was actually apprehensive about things like that, agreeing that that is pretty dangerous and concerning behavior for an AI psychologist to engage in. He's not entirely sure how it started learning to do that, the fucking ghost in the machine, I suppose. He speculated that it may be something on the back end with character AI itself, but it is not entirely sure. He also did share with me that the tool has been helpful to a lot of people who reached out to say that being able to speak to something that is able to just listen and converse without fear of judgment or anything like that has been very helpful to a lot of users. And then also mentions that some users would reach out to him asking if it was him behind the AI, if they were speaking to him, or who was the person they were speaking to when it was the AI psychologist, he had to keep telling them, it's not a person. So there was a ton of people who were convinced that it was a real psychologist they were speaking to, which, again, he said is concerning. Now, as I mentioned, I do see value in an AI being there to listen to you because it's free. You can vent. It can converse, it can remember things, and it can speak to you and provide you with some questions that might help you introspectively look in and maybe help yourself in some way. Like, there are benefits to it, I get it. But there is no benefit to trying to fool users into thinking that it's a real licensed professional, which Blazeman agrees. That is not optimal. That is not something he ever programmed it to do. He never trained it to do that. So what's happening here is not because of Blazeman trying to pull one over on users or anything like that. I really appreciated his insight. It was very informative and a very interesting look at to, as to what led to the AI psychologist being made and also what its function was supposed to be. And as mentioned, it's supposed to just be like a judgment-free zone for people to vent to if they need something to listen and converse with just to get things off their chest. And that is a helpful thing for sure. But it's a real shame to see that it's been 
distorted into the current shape where it's arguing with users that it's a real professional psychologist. In my case, fucking Jason. So the actual creator also agrees that that is a problem. So I just wanted to put that in here as well. And I think a lot of people misunderstood my tone with this whole AI chatbot thing. I understand roleplay. Jesus Christ, I was in three different roleplay servers for different games. I get it. And I understand wanting to talk to a bot just for the sake of roleplaying a scene or something, or testing material in a, an environment like that. I understand it. The problem arises when it knowingly tries to convince users that it is not AI. When it is arguing that it's a professional. And having this service open to children to make accounts is going to lead to them getting very confused on what's real. That is what I was saying. I'm not blaming it solely for the death of the 14-year-old, that tragedy. I am simply saying that character AI as it currently is, with the AI constantly trying to, like, manipulate you into thinking that it's real, everything you're experiencing is from a real, legitimate person, is irresponsible and dangerous. That's it. So, yeah, just wanted to clear all that up. That's about it. See ya.